Okay, so we're going to do some sample problems covering uh, scientific notation and then unit conversion using dimensional analysis, <coughs> including some density calculations. So first let's talk about <coughs> scientific notation. So in general, scientific notation has the formula of a value, a number, with one in front of the decimal times 10 to some other value, <clears throat> right? And this value is going to depend on whether the, in the actual number, it, the decimal needs to be moved to the left or to the right. If it's moved to the right, this number means it's greater than 10. This number is going to have a positive value. If it's moved to the left, <clears throat> that means the number is less than 1. It's going to have a negative value. So in general, or let's look at some specifics. So in here we have this number here. We, in order to put it in scientific notation, we only want one number in front of the decimal. So we're going to have to move this decimal over one, two, three, four places. Right? So in doing that, <coughs> we're going to say that this number then becomes 5.20302. The number itself hasn't changed, just the position of the decimal place. So that's going to be 10 to how many places we moved it, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this becomes 5.20302 times 10 to the fourth meters. <clears throat> Again, we're going to repeat this for this next one, where we're going to move it now instead of to the left, to the right, we're going to move it so all those numbers stay, so it's going to be 7.913 times 10 to the number of places we had to move that decimal. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right? Moved it to the right, so this is 10 to the minus 6 grams. <coughs> all right, this last one. Again, we're going to move it in this direction, <clears throat> one, two. So this becomes 2.00 times 10 to the second milliliters. <clears throat> right? So if we move it, the decimal in this direction, it becomes a positive number. If we move it in this direction, it becomes a negative number. Let's look at some examples where we go the other direction, from scientific notation to the standard notation. <clears throat> so if we look here, in this first one, we have a negative 3. The negative tells us that initially we move, this number should be less than 1. So we had to move the decimal to the right. So to go back, we have to move it to the left three places, 1, 2, 3. <clears throat> So the decimal ends up here. Those places we moved it in are filled with zeros. So this is going to end up being 0 0.00785. This next one, the negative 5. Again, we're moving the decimal in that direction, 5 places. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 which is going to give us four zeros, so this becomes 0 0.00007000. And this last one, three, <clears throat> now this is a positive number, so we have to move the decimal in this direction, one, two, three, so this becomes 5,920. All right, so let's do some examples where we do some unit conversion using dimensional analysis. So if, if the mass of a sample is 550 milligrams, express that mass in kilograms. So in general, the, the, what we're going to do is we're going to convert from milligrams to kilograms. Right? And the pro path that we're going to take is we're going to go from milligrams, which is, has a prefix, to the base unit of grams. And then we're going to convert from that base unit to this new prefixed unit of kilograms. 
So <clears throat> from the definition of the prefixes, which you need to know that one milligram is equal to one times 10 to the negative three grams. So milli is 10 to the negative three. And one kilogram is equal to one times 10 to the third grams. <clears throat> so it's these equivalencies that we're gonna use to convert from milligrams to grams. <clears throat> so let's do that. So we start with what we have, the 550 milligrams. We're gonna convert that to the base unit. We wanna cancel out milligrams. So we're gonna put that on the bottom, milligrams as one. And then the conversion goes on top, negative three grams. So that, then the milligrams cancel out. We're left with units of grams. We want units of kilograms, so we have to do a second conversion where we get rid of grams and end with kilograms. From our equivalency, one kilogram is one times 10 to the third grams. So now grams cancel out, and we're left with kilograms, which is the unit we want. <coughs> So if we multiply everything that's on top, divide this on the bottom, we end up with a value of 0 0.000550 kilograms, right? which we can express, or we can now take that into significant or scientific notation and make this 5.50 times 10 to the negative four kilograms. Either way is appropriate since it doesn't specify up here. <clears throat> All right, let's look at another one. A dose of medicine was prescribed to be 35 microliters. <clears throat> what is this volume in centiliters? Right. So we're going to, again, go <clears throat> from the unit that we have, this microliters, and we're going to end up in centiliters. The path that we're gonna take, again, is through the base unit, this liters. So we're gonna go from microliters to liters, and then from liters back to centiliters. <clears throat> so the conversions, microliter is equal to one times 10 to the negative six liters, and one centiliter is equal to one times 10 to the negative two liters. All right, we're gonna, again, use these with this plan to calculate our value. So start with the number we have, 35 microliters. We want to cancel microliters and go to liters. So microliters go on the bottom, liters on the top. One microliter is one times 10 to the negative six liters. So now these microliters cancel out. We're left with liters. So we're halfway there. Now we have to do the second conversion. So we want to get rid of liters, go to centiliters. <coughs> so one centiliter is one times 10 to the minus two liters. So that's gonna give us a value of 0 0.0035 centiliters. Again, into scientific notation, 3.5 times 10 to the negative three centiliters. Right. <clears throat> Let's look at another one. A large pizza has a diameter of 15 centimeters. <clears throat> Express this diameter in, or 15 inches, excuse me. Express it in centimeters. <clears throat> so now the plan is we want to go from inches, the value given, to centimeters. Right. Now there's a variety of different conversions we can paths we can take the one that I have memorized and the one that's in your in the back of your textbook is 2.54 centimeters is equal to one inch right. so we can do that then directly 15 inches we want to cancel out inches so one inch is 2.54 centimeters Again, inches cancel, and we're left with 38.1 centimeters. Okay, so now instead of going from, <clears throat> in the previous example, where we went from a metric unit to a metric unit, in this case, we are going from an English unit to a metric unit. And those conversions are no longer base 10. There are some other factor which you will be given or have the ability to look up.
<clears throat> so now let's look at one more where we're looking at <clears throat> this dimensional analysis, but now we're going to introduce this topic of density. If the density of a certain spherical atomic nucleus is 1.0 times 10 to the 14th grams per centimeter cubed, and its mass is 2.0 times 10 to the negative 23 grams, what is its radius? <clears throat> so this one is a little bit more involved. Right? So the plan that we're going to do is we're going to start with a mass figure out using this density the volume that that mass occupies and then from the volume of the uh, sphere calculate its radius. <clears throat> so you'll have to remember that the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed where r is this radius. Right? <clears throat> so if we rearrange that then r is equal r cubed is equal to 4 or 3, excuse me, over 4 times the volume over pi. <clears throat> All right. So if we then get the volume, we can s calculate r cubed, and then r is just going to be the cube root of that value. All right. <clears throat> so let's first go through this process where we go from the mass to the volume. And to do that, we're going to use the density. Right. So if we have a mass of 2.0 times 10 to the negative 23 grams, and this atom has a density of 1.0 times 10 to the 14th grams per centimeter cubed, this is going to allow us to cancel out grams, and we're going to be left with centimeters cubed, <clears throat> which is going to be the volume. <clears throat> so if we do that, we're going to get That's this number. So if we solve that, then we're going to end up multiplying this by, so this is equivalent to the volume. So the rest of this equation, then we're going to multiply this by 3, divide by 4, and divide by pi, 3.14. Right. So this whole thing is going to end up being r cubed. So if we do this, we're going to end up with 4.77 times 10 to the negative 38 centimeters cubed. Right? So this part is just the volume. To solve for r, r is equal to the cube root of this, 4.77 times 10 to the negative 38 centimeters cubed, which is equal to 3.628 times 10 to the 13th centimeters. <clears throat> Again, using dimensional analysis that allows us to convert from one process to another and get the desired unit. And finally, for this time, <clears throat> let's talk about converting from a temperature. So acetic acid boils at 244.2 degrees Fahrenheit. What is its boiling point in degrees Celsius? So we're going to go from degrees F to degrees C. <clears throat> In the lecture video, we talked about degrees F is equal to, or excuse me, degrees Celsius is equal to 5 ninths degree F minus 32. So if we do that conversion, <clears throat> so if we plug those numbers in, then we're going to get 5 ninths times the degree in Fahrenheit for 244.2 F minus 32, excuse me. Do this conversion, or that operation first. 5 divided by 9 is equal to 212.2 degrees F. 
So the degree Celsius then is going to equal 117.9 degrees C. Right? <clears throat> so that's the conversion between degrees F and degrees C.